Welcome to online worship for Broadway and Port Colden United Methodist Churches. My name is Pastor Catherine, and I greet you from wherever you are joining us from this day, December 24th, the fourth Sunday of Advent. Later this evening, we will gather in person and virtually to celebrate Christmas Eve, but this morning, we end our Advent journey together, reflecting on what God has been preparing us for and calling us to. And so as we enter this time, I offer you these words of invitation. On this bright morning full of love, We remember God's gifts to us, the gift of a child, the gift of comfort, the gift of presence, and the gift of joy. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, we give thanks to God for the gift of the Christ child. So let us worship God together. Will you join me in our opening song? Let us continue our time with our call to worship. The words will be on the screen, and I invite you to respond with the words in bold. In the midst of our circumstances, God offers reassurance. Do not be afraid. But just because it's good news doesn't mean it's easy to bear. God offers us hope. There is enough. You are beloved. All are welcome here. May we be strengthened and emboldened by these promises to us. Each week during the season of Advent, we have lit a candle on our Advent wreath. 
And so today we light the fourth candle, the candle of love. As we prepare for Jesus to come anew, we, like Mary, are called to muster up the courage of love and the courage to love. This courage does not require us to be fearless, but in our fears to respond to God's love with our own love, a love that says, here I am I, even as we step into the unknown. Coming one, we confess that the waiting of Advent can be unnerving. Draw us forward in courage with your bold and steady love, so that we, in turn, can bravely love the world you have created. Hear now our scripture for today from the Gospel of Luke. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
When I was 13, shortly after my confirmation, I decided I wanted to do the annual lay speaker, now lay servant course our district hosted. My mom had attended over several years, sometimes with my sister and I in tow on an early Saturday morning, and that year she was teaching one of the cohorts. The goal of this multi-week program is to help professing members of the local church be more informed on and committed to the scriptures and the doctrine, the heritage, organization, and life of the United Methodist Church. Lay speakers serve the local church by witnessing to the Christian faith through spoken communication, church and community leadership, and caregiving ministries. When certified, the lay speaker may conduct services of worship and preach and lead study sessions as requested by the pastor or the district superintendent. And in hindsight, God was preparing me for a larger calling by placing on my heart to uh, participate at such a young age. But in that moment, I just felt a nudge to be part of what was going on. So I signed up for the youth cohort and found on the first day that I was the only one in our district to have done so. So the youth cohort leader and I sat down on that first Saturday morning and weighed all my options for how we would move forward. We talked about school, We talked about my commitments there. We talked about what I was involved with in church. We talked about dreams and visions and hopes and even frustrations. And then after talking for a while and getting to know one another more fully, she looked me in the eyes and said, ultimately, you get to choose what you want to do. But I think if you're willing to do the work, this time will not be a waste for you. She saw me, she affirmed me, she placed a stamp of approval on the calling on my heart. Encouragement possesses a remarkable power to uplift and inspire. A simple word of encouragement has the power to help an individual navigate challenges that arise and find strength within themselves they may not even realize was there. Encouragement is a force that transcends boundaries, that offers support and fosters resilience, and a well-timed word of encouragement can be a beacon amid the trials of life, reminding one of their inherent worth and potential. In this life, we are constantly presented with situations where we must choose to move forward in spite of or alongside of our uncertainties. Words have the power to build, to inspire, to affirm the beauty of life's journey. Encouragement inspires us in many ways to just keep going. As we have journeyed through this Advent season together, we have been invited to prepare ourselves, our hearts and lives for the one who is to come. For each of us, this season calls us to remember that it's not just the birth of a child that is important here, but the birth of a whole new order of love and justice ushered into the world by this child. If anything, the uncertainty of trusting in the unknown future is held in reflection to the waiting and anticipation of this season, an invitation to find hope and trust in the promises of faith, to witness encouragement. So on this last Sunday of Advent, we turn to the story of Mary. The angel Gabriel visits Mary after uh, doing some rounds earlier in the same chapter, and he declares that she will give birth to God's son, an announcement surrounded by the impossible. He tells her about her cousin Elizabeth's pregnancy, an unlikely thing, and Mary, in her moment with him, accepts accepts her call on the call of God on her life. 
through Luke's account, we are given an example through Mary as the model for Christian discipleship. Blessed Virgin, model of motherhood, role model of feminist identification, Mary's memory has been cherished in a variety of ways throughout the centuries. And especially in this season, we tend to limit our discussion of her to who she is in relationship to her role in the birth of Jesus. In the Gospel of Mark, her most memorable appearance may be the account in which she had and her other sons come to take Jesus home thinking that he's gone off of his rocker. In Matthew's gospel, she doesn't fare too much better in how she is uh, talked about, though she is uh, present at the empty tomb in that account. But the gospel of John never mentions her by name. And Paul, in all of the letters that make up our New Testament, make no mention of her at all. Yet here is Luke giving us over 30 verses in the first chapter of this gospel to journey alongside Mary. Verses to witness not just her responses to a fear-filled moment with an angel, but to witness the willingness of her heart and her understanding of what it means to be part of the transformation of this world. See, Mary is being called in this moment to a prophetic task. Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. In a moment where fear could have had the final say, Mary chose to be open to the possibility of this moment. She chose to be courageous. And so in this moment, courage simply defined as the ability to do something that frightens self, strength in the face of pain and grief. Biblical courage is simply the opposite of fear. And so courage in this moment was a belief and trust in the one she could not see, but one she knew was capable of this seemingly impossible thing. She trusted in what could be. And if we are not careful, it's easy to overlook the tendrils of Mary's faithfulness that are woven throughout this account, because to do this, to do this looking invites us to consider how she got to this moment and was able to say yes so easily to what the angel put before her. It invites us to consider who prepared her for this unexpected scenario, this unexpected encounter, because if we are honest, nothing could have really prepared Mary for something like this, except God's grace and provision, except a wholehearted trust in what God could do. God noticed her, favored her, called her to be part of something more from peasant girl to prophet, from Mary to mother of God, from denial to discipleship. And so the story of Mary invites us, beloved, to ask ourselves a few things. What would it look like for our church to be a place where each person comes and learns that they too are favored by God. What would it look like for us to commit to being a community, above all else, of encouragement? What would it look like for us to prioritize creating spaces for meaningful connection with anyone who enters there, enters here? Because if nothing else, the story of Mary calls us, invites us, urges us to expand our vision of what can be possible in this world, to prepare ourselves for everything and anything. When we are favored by God, we are called to use what God gives us for the benefit of others, to give in the work of community. To do this work, to usher in God's reign, to build God's kingdom here, we must choose in each of every day to go into the unknown ahead with courage. To go using everything at our disposal. To discover courage in identity of self, courage in communal work and living, courage in community. This is the call. 
for this last Sunday in Advent and beyond. So if nothing else, friends, keep awake, get ready, testify, be courageous. May may you prepare your lives for the one who is to come. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Keep awake, get ready, testify, be courageous. We have been given the tools this Advent season of what it takes to prepare our lives, our hearts, our whole beings for the inbreaking of God in this world. We have been given a glimpse of the countercultural life that we have been called to live for centuries, millennia even. And so today we get to choose. Will we choose the ways of God or will we choose the ways of the world? My prayer for us is this, that we would see God at work 
in the ordinary places of our lives. That we would expect the impossible to happen because we trust in the one who makes impossible things happen. My hope is that we would believe that we are enough. And so may God use you, use me, use each of us as vessels of hope, peace, joy, and love in this world, on this day, and for all the days to come. May it be so. And may God go with you in all that you do. Amen.